Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> I made a video yesterday um, where I talked about the best fighters in the sport pound for pound. And in the comment section to that video, many people talked about Ray Robinson against Floyd Mayweather. Now, the video wasn't intended to be historical. I may have mentioned Ray Robinson in the video, but I could tell that I tapped a nerve that we should explore a little bit, right? Floyd Mayweather against Ray Robinson. Well, let me, um, let me say that what I've done here because I want people to look at the fights themselves is on my channel page here on YouTube I've posted three fights I've linked the three fights in the favorites um, on that page the first is Ray Robinson against Rocky Graziano a fight at middleweight understand Robinson's 32 years old in that fight right Floyd Mayweather now is 37 years old so understand that Ray Robinson is closer to his prime, I would argue, than Mayweather is to his right now. I've also posted two fights that history seems to have forgotten, but that the boxing hardcore need to focus on. It's Ray Robinson against Randy Turpin. Understand Turpin took Robinson's title. I've posted both the first fight and the second fight. Now I believe that the second fight is of particular importance because the first fight they claim Robinson didn't train for it. Right? Robinson supposedly was out on golf courses and in card rooms instead of preparing for a fight against 23 year old 40 wins, 2 losses Randy Turpin in a fight by the way that was so anticipated in Europe that 18,000 people showed up for the fight. <clears throat> now there is no question that Turpin beats up Ray Robinson in the first fight. Now the second fight which takes place in the polo grounds just a little bit more than 60 days later, I believe 64 days later, is a fight that Ray Robinson supposedly trained for. Right? Understand in that second fight, which deserves your full attention, the referee, Rudy Goldstein, had that fight four rounds to four rounds after eight. Let me go one step further. What I want you to do is to look at the knockout in that fight. Ray does catch Randy Turpin. No question about it. But Turpin gets off the canvas. Time's running out in the round. The fight still hangs in the balance. This is an era of not 12 rounds, but 15 rounds. The fight is competitive up until the knockdown. This is in the rematch. What I want people to do is to look at what happens after Turpin gets off the canvas. Should that fight have been stopped? The tape I've posted has some commentary by Rocky Marciano, right? Ray Robinson is one of history's most loved fighters. In Marciano's opinion, the fight clearly should have been stopped. In Richard Dwyer's opinion, in my opinion, I'm not so sure. The fight is stopped with only eight seconds left in the round. While Turpin clearly has his bell rung, he seems to be doing just 
enough on the ropes, right? Leaning back, moving his head to avoid being caught clean. Ray Robinson knows that knocking him down is going to be a problem. So Robinson, while he has him on the ropes, shrewdly starts throwing shots to the body. I believe Ray Robinson himself understood that there was a chance that Turpin was going to survive the round. Now understand, life turns on moments like that. They stop the fight. Turpin loses his title back to Robinson. Turpin is never the same. Turpin seems to have had emotional problems, right? Perhaps that explains why he's so fearless in the ring against Ray Robinson. Well, Turpin, three years later, would eventually get knocked out in the first round of a fight in Rome. Turpin's life would unravel further. Turpin ultimately, in his late 30s, <clears throat> would commit suicide and would also apparently, as part of his suicide, shoot his daughter. Right? Now the daughter may have lived, I've looked it up online, I'm not sure. But just understand that had they allowed that fight to continue, in my opinion it's unclear what would have happened the rest of the fight. Understand, had Ray Robinson lost a second time to Randy Turpin, Turpin would have gone back to the United Kingdom with the middleweight title. It's because Robinson beats Turpin that that's viewed as one of the highlights of Robinson's career. Now let's talk about Robinson versus Floyd Mayweather. Robinson, a different fighter than Floyd. Robinson's 5'11". Floyd is 5'8". For Robinson, the welterweight division was really just a starting point. <clears throat> Robinson would actually go on and pick up the middleweight title. He would even fight for the light heavyweight title. Understand for Floyd, the welterweight division is really a division he doesn't even enter until, in my opinion, he's past his prime. We talk about Manny Pacquiao winning titles in several weight classes. I would encourage you to look at Floyd Mayweather's record. Understand, Floyd is a late arriver to welterweight, right? Sugar Ray Robinson was an early welterweight who then moves on to middleweight. Ray Robinson's best division by record is the welterweight division. Understand Ray Robinson's only loss, and this is with a hundred or so wins at welter, his only loss was to Jake LaMotta in 1943, February the 5th. And understand that fight is curious because while Ray Robinson weighed 144 and a half pounds, Jake LaMotta weighed, believe it or not, more than 160 pounds. He weighed 160 and a half pounds. Understand back then, you didn't have these intermediate weight classes. There's no Junior welter, 140. No super welter, 154, right? Or junior middle, depending on how you want to call it, right? So you had guys like Ray Robinson, a welterweight, fighting middleweights. He eventually loses, not by KO, but by decision to Jake LaMotta. Now, there are not a lot of films of Robinson as a welter, suffice it to say. The films you're seeing, the films I've posted, of Robinson as a middleweight, in my opinion, are Robinson past his prime. Right? Just like I would argue that Ali's prime isn't in the 1970s. 
It's in the 1960s. It's against Cleveland Williams. It's against Zora Folly. Right? It's against Sonny Liston. That's Ali's prime. It's not the Fraser Norton Foreman Spinks era. Right? I would argue that Ray Robinson's prime is not middleweight, where he lost to people like Gene Fulmer, Randy Turpin. Right? It's when he's a welterweight where he didn't lose to any other welterweights. Right? The guy he loses to when he's at welter is Jake LaMotta. Right? Now let me point out a few things. And I would encourage you to start with the Rocky Graziano film. Right? What you're going to see in that film is that Robinson is much more offensive than Floyd Mayweather. He's doing things like jumping all in, throwing double left hooks. He's very aggressive. Right? He's doing things like having his head near Graziano's chest. And understand, Graziano is a Rocky Marciano type fighter, fighting out of a crouch. You have Robinson leaning his head in and when Graziano throws hooks, Robinson is so high risk that he's ducking under the hooks, right? It's crazy stuff that you wouldn't see Floyd Mayweather do. But here's what I want to point out to you about that fight. In the third round, they gloss over it. Ray Robinson gets knocked down. His knee hits the canvas. Right? Robinson's more offensive than Floyd. He's not as defensive as Floyd. Right? It's rough and tumble. He's in there throwing punches. He's in there being aggressive. He gets hit. By the way, these are the old days. His knee hits the canvas. Everyone knows it's a knockdown. No standing eight. He gets back up, right? They continue fighting, right? Even decades after Tunney Dempsey, you had some jurisdictions where there's no standing A cap. So Robinson, of course, gets off the canvas in that third round and proceeds to close the show with the kind of punch that you rarely see Floyd Mayweather throw, right? The power is obvious. He knocks out Graziano's mouthpiece and Graziano with the right hand, right? Graziano gets up, is so out of it. You actually see him in the corner trying to shake the knockout out of his leg, right? His legs are dazed. Understand, Robinson, as pretty as he looked in the ring, as much of a boxer as he was in the ring, was a devastatingly hard puncher, right? Let me also point out that were he to fight Floyd Mayweather, there's a charisma gap. As I've said in other videos, Floyd is respected, he's not loved, right? I view Manny Pacquiao as more charismatic than Floyd Mayweather, right? Understand there are other boxers in history who were more loved than Floyd Mayweather. I would say both Sugar Rays, Ray Leonard and Ray Robinson, were much more loved than Floyd Mayweather. Right? To the extent that the adoration of the crowd leads the judges to give close rounds to the loved fighter. Mayweather would have problems. But let's talk about other things that matter. There is no question in my mind that if the action gets to the side of the ring, right, and Floyd Mayweather has his back up against the ring, if, if both guys at different times have their backs up against the ring, there's no question in my mind that Mayweather is a much better defensive fighter. 
than Sugar Ray Robinson. I mean a much better defensive fighter than Sugar Ray Robinson. Right? Understand Robinson gets beat up by Turpin who really in essence is coming in and is just trying to impose himself on Robinson, right? Those kind of fighters don't have success against Floyd Mayweather. They just don't. Let me point out too that Mayweather, and people don't seem to realize this, Mayweather might look slick in the ring. He's a very strong man. You don't see him getting manhandled like Ray Robinson, right? Robinson might have the heavier punch, in part because Robinson's all in on punches, right? He's an offensive juggernaut. He's higher volume than Floyd Mayweather, right? He just simply is. But when Robinson's not devastating you with punches, Physically stronger men, Carmine Basilio, Gene Fulmer, Randy Turpin. Now, granted, these guys are middleweights. I'll agree. Right? They're not welterweights. But it's clear that Ray Robinson physically isn't made for wrestling. Right? He's not a grappler. All Randy Turpin's trying to do in both fights is to dodge Robinson's jab and then get inside and try to muscle him. You'll notice Turpin's back is muscle bound. He's physically the stronger guy than Ray Robinson. Robinson's the sharpshooter, but Robinson can't handle guys getting inside of his punches and actually wrestling with him inside. Jake LaMotta, another guy, a lot bigger than him. Floyd Mayweather, by contrast, will fight a Cotto. Will fight a Ricky Hatton. Will fight a Victor Ortiz. All of these guys against Floyd will try to lower the shoulder on him, get inside, and wrestle with him. I invite everyone to read Ricky Hatton's post-fight comments about fighting inside with Floyd Mayweather. Hatton gave several interviews after his loss to Mayweather. Keep in mind, Hatton gets knocked out, where Hatton talks about how he gets inside, and then he found out that Floyd knew how to fight inside. Right? Floyd can actually wrestle with you. Let me point out too that Randy Turpin is shorter than 5'11 Ray Robinson. I believe the Raging Bull Jake LaMotta is shorter than Ray Robinson. Right? Robinson had a problem with shorter fighters who could get inside and wrestle with him. Right? So it's interesting because this is a fight where in my opinion, right, Robinson would look prettier than Floyd Mayweather. Robinson's a guy with a fight style that just looked pretty. Robinson is more charismatic. The way Robinson's hair was, you know, that process here where a few rounds into the fight, it starts to fly around. And it looks like Robinson is, you know, working hard and stuff like that. I think that's more appealing to the crowd. But in terms of effectiveness, there'd be a gap defensively. Right? Robinson, at least according to the tapes I've looked at, and online you can find the Basilio tape, you can find the Fulmer tapes. And I know... Robinson knocked out Fulmer in one fight. But there are other fights Robinson had with Fulmer. 
what you're going to find is there's a way to fight Ray Robinson. It's on both Randy Turpin films. Right? Right now. We really don't have a film that convincingly shows the way to fight Floyd Mayweather. We just don't. Right? You know, we just don't. I know there's a controversial fight, the Castillo fight, the first fight, not the second, the first fight. Understand that first fight couldn't happen today. We know that by looking at the Ricky Hatton film. Maybe Floyd didn't fight inside as well then as he did by the time he gets to Ricky Hatton. But understand it's clear that Castillo's tactics in that first fight didn't work in the second fight, wouldn't work today. Right? And that first fight, I'll say this, that first fight isn't a blueprint like the first Turpin fight, which isn't close. Right? Ray Robinson loses that fight by a margin. In fact, I'll go further. Jake LaMotta, Ray Robinson. LaMotta does very well late in that fight. Now I know Ray Robinson comes back and owns LaMotta in subsequent fights. No question about it. But understand Ray is never comfortable with his back up against the ropes like Floyd. Right? So I'll say this. You know when we all get to heaven there are going to be certain fights we want to see. Prime Floyd Mayweather, and I would say prime means Floyd of a few years ago, right? When he still had his legs. I would say Floyd against Arturo Gotti is prime Floyd Mayweather. I would encourage people to look at that fight, right? Compare and contrast that fight to Gotti's fights against Mickey Ward, right? Prime Floyd Mayweather against prime Sugar Ray Robinson. If you could equalize the weights, have it at 147 pounds. I think the big question would be whether Ray Robinson could land things like double left hooks on Floyd Mayweather or whether Mayweather's defense is such that Robinson would find that he couldn't land the punches. Right inside I'd give the edge to Mayweather. Up on the ropes, I'd give the edge to Mayweather. Now I'll agree. Many of the real boxing hardcore here online point out that Robinson fought 15 round fights. We don't know what Floyd would do against the fighter the caliber of Ray Robinson in rounds 13, 14, and 15. Understand too, Floyd's former longtime trainer right his uncle Roger Mayweather firmly believes that the best fighter in history is Ray Robinson right all I'm saying is let's not discount what fighters are doing today my eyes tell me that Floyd Mayweather is better defensively than Ray Robinson my eyes tell me that if someone gets inside on Ray Robinson, inside of his arms, he would find that Ray's upper body is not that tough and that he could wrestle a bit with Ray Robinson. Right? Floyd has done that in fights. Right? My eyes also tell me that Ray Robinson did get decked in some fights. Right? The press can gloss over it all they want. I know Rocky Marciano had a punch. Right, Marciano strikes me, excuse me, not Marciano, Graziano. Graziano strikes me as a bit of a limited fighter. It's a bit astonishing that he was able to land some quality shots on Ray Robinson when Ray Robinson was 32 years 
old. Also, I have a hard time believing some of the folklore. Randy Turpin didn't come out of nowhere to beat Ray Robinson. We know his record. It was 40 and 2. The two losses he had at the time, he avenged them. The fight so hyped, 18,000 people show up. Am I supposed to believe the folklore that Ray Robinson was completely unprepared for him? Also understand the technology argument breaks both ways. Back in the day, if I'm fighting Ray Robinson on, let's say, three weeks notice, right? Isn't that, you know, these fighters fought so often, even the distance between Robinson versus Turpin 1 and Robinson versus Turpin 2 is only 64 days, right? Or thereabouts. Right back then, a lot of the guys who fought Ray Robinson weren't able to watch him on film and break down the film the way we are today. So how much of Ray Robinson's dominance was a product of the lack of familiarity, the lack of resources at the time? I guarantee you that right now, Marcus Maidana with his team, the great Robert Garcia, his trainer, I guarantee you that those guys are looking at films of Mayweather almost frame by frame, right? They're going back through Mayweather's history. You here on YouTube can research more film of a fighter's history than guys could in the 40s and 50s when Ray Robinson ruled the roost, right? So all I'm saying is the level of preparation today is much greater than it was in Ray Robinson's time. A guy who had power and speed, who could lead with a jab and had movement like Ray Robinson, an excellent fighter back then, would be harder to prepare for on let's say four weeks rest than such a fighter today where guys would be breaking down what he does on film where the fights if he's an elite fighter the fights are televised and you actually have film of all of the fights not just film summaries right so put me among those who believes it's unclear who wins Ray Robinson against Floyd. I'll agree. Ray's the taller guy. I agree. Ray's the prettier fighter. I think Mayweather's better inside. I think Mayweather's better along the ropes. I think Mayweather's better defensively. Let me also point out, too, that it's my belief that styles make fights. Right? I don't believe that historically these guys beat everyone else, right? Emmanuel Stewart himself believed that if anyone had the style to beat Floyd Mayweather, it was his former fighter who, like Ray Robinson, started at welter and moved on all the way up to light heavy. And that's Thomas the Hitman Hearns, right? All I can say is look at the hitman's destruction. And that's the word of Roberto Duran, a great fighter with great inside skills. And ask yourself, what exactly would Floyd Mayweather do against Thomas the Hitman Hearns? Right? I would argue, too, that Ray Leonard because of his movement, would give Floyd a very hard time. I'll agree that I would take Ray Robinson over Ray Leonard, but understand Ray Leonard didn't have anything remotely approaching Floyd Mayweather's level of defense. Right, so at the end of the day, I think styles make fights, but I'll say between these two men, Ray Robinson and Floyd, I think it's a close call. Right? I'm not one of those people who believes that these legendary fighters necessarily beat today's fighters. 
right? There are times when we should all recognize that some fighters operating today are legendary fighters, right? Who should be placed on the same pedestal as all-time greats. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. The Graziano fight, the first Turpin fight, and the second Turpin fight are all on my channel page. Understand too, Turpin, in my opinion, may have suffered from bipolar disorder. Right? The first fight, he comes out, his attitude is such that he clearly is unintimidated fighting the great Ray Robinson, right? And he's doing some interesting things in the ring himself, showing a certain fearlessness, right, in the ring itself, right? As you look at the fight, I encourage you to Google Randy Turpin. He was a hell of a fighter, right? I believe mental illness contributed to what ultimately happened to him. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.